Hello there, Mount Tabor Baptist Church, my wonderful friends, brothers and sisters, Bishop Foster, Pastor Smith, so glad to be tuned in with you all today. Uh, today's message is going to be coming from the gospel as recorded by Luke, the 15th chapter, and we'll get right into the verses starting at verse number 11. And he said, this is Jesus speaking, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, a good daddy with two bad boys. A good daddy with two bad boys. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise Just to say, thus saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you How I prove and oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just to simply a faith plunge in being beneath the healing cleansing flood jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him oh and oh jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more amen hallelujah as we look at our text today, we find Jesus giving out parables to the Pharisees and the scribes who murmured against him. He first gave a parable of a lost sheep. A man had a uh, hundred sheep and he lost one. And he sought after that one sheep. He left the 99 and sought after that one sheep until he found it. A woman had 10 coins and lost one coin and she looked throughout her house looking for that one coin. She swept the house and cleaned the house until she finally found her lost coin. Isn't it amazing how we, we look after and seek after our possessions and let go of the most valuable possessions, our families? Yes, this is a Father's Day message today. And I'm so glad that this father that Jesus spoke of in this text today was a good daddy. He was a good father. As we find in our text at the beginning of that verse, that 11th verse, we find that the younger one started filling his oats and filling himself. Or as the old folk used to say back in the day, he started smelling himself. Now, some of you may not know in this audience what I mean by that, but what that means is that he thought he was grown. He was full grown and could do whatever he wanted to do. And he told his daddy, he said, daddy, give me everything that belongs to me. And, and not only was the daddy fair, he gave him what belonged to him. He gave him his inheritance, and, but he also gave it to his brother. If you look at the text, it's right there in your text. If you haven't closed your Bibles, Luke 15, 12. And the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he and the B clause divided unto them his living. In our B clause, we find that he divided unto them his living. So he gave to both children, both boys. And then in not many days after this, he took his goods and he went to a far country. 
sounds just like many of us. <laughs> we get what we got and we, we go to that far country. The far country is the far country of sin. We get deep out there and we, we get into the sin and we get into what we think is going to make us feel better and we're going to have fun, we'll have a good time. But I'm here to let you know you can party harder, but you're going to get tired and the money will run out. And when your money run out, your friends will become few. In fact, you will not have any friends at all. Look what we find this young man. Verse 14. Okay, verse 13. We see him. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He got all of his belongings. He took a journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. He lived it up. He went to the strip club and he went to the party. And, and, and he was the life of the party. He was making it rain wherever he went. Am I right about it? Huh? He was making it rain and he was living it big and living the good life. But look, look, look what happens. Verse 14. And when he has spent all, say all, all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. The famine was so bad that he began to be in want. Now he had spent his money on his friends that he had made. They weren't real friends. And I guarantee he went to some of them to try to borrow and ask for a little help. Can you, hold, can you let me hold something, brother? Can you let me hold something? No one had anything for him. That's how it is when you get out there in that world. The world looks out for its own. But when they're down, when you're down, the world will be low down and pick, put you down. And so we find here in this text in verse 14, when he had spent all, there arose this famine. Verse 15, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into the fields, the citizen of that country, sent him into the fields to feed pigs. Now, if you can imagine in your mind with me, if you could just conjure up the thought of it, a Jewish boy. Pigs are not kosher animals. Jewish people who are kosher do not eat pigs. He put him in a pig sty. Can you imagine in your mind? It would be the equivalent of, uh, 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 of a, uh, a black man uh, that loved caviar and didn't like uh, fried chicken. <laughs> but, well, you know, there are times when black men are cultivated and black women are cultivated. We do like fried uh, caviar over fried chicken. But for the most part, if we had the choice between some fried chicken and some caviar, we'll take the fried chicken. But we see here in our text today that he was in a pigsty. But look, it didn't get that, that, that wasn't bad enough. Now he's a Jewish boy and he's in a pigsty. But if that was not bad enough, he was hungry. Say hungry. He was hungry, and the Bible said he got so desperate, he was willing to eat the husk of the pigs, the pig's husk. That they eat. He was willing to get down to the level of a pig. I'm here to let you know, my brother, my sister, that you're out there right now and you're eating pig hus. That pig hus is that crack. That pig hus is that drug. Uh, that pig hus is that premarital sex. That pig hus is that uh, homosexuality, that lesbianism, that pig hus. But God is getting ready to deliver you right now. He's going to snatch you back and you're going to go back home. You're getting ready right now to go back home. I don't know how you feel, but I believe in my spirit that God is getting ready to arrest you in that adultery room. Right now, he's getting ready to stop you from doing what you're doing and you're gonna turn your heart back towards God. The word says that, that, that he was in the pig sky. Let, let, let me read it to you. Verse 16, and when fain, would, he would fain, which means he would have fainted, have filled, he wanted to fill his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. Look, be claws, and no man gave unto him. Nobody. See, that's how it is. When you run out of money, you run out of friends. When you got plenty of money, you got plenty of friends. Now, I'm not against you being prosperous, but I, I believe that you should be prosperous in God's design. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will give you all of the other things. All of the other things will come as a first by first seeking his kingdom, his way of doing things. Verse 17, and when he came to himself, thank you, Lord. I, I don't know how you feel, but I remember when I came to myself. I was out in sin. I was lost far from the peaceful shore far from the master, but I came to myself in the midst of my mess. He rebuked the devil for me long enough for me to make a decision for myself. And I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And have I been perfect ever since? No. But one good thing about it, I got the blood of Jesus, his grace and his mercy. They cover me every day. The Bible said he was willing to get up from where he was. Look at verse 17. He said, when he came to himself, he said to himself, self, self, you got to talk to yourself. When you're discouraged, you must talk to yourself and tell yourself, I am encouraged. I can wait. I, I am able to do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can go forward. I can accomplish what I need to accomplish in Jesus name. We find, he said, look, how many hired servants that are in my father's house? They got bread enough and to spare. And here I am in this pig stock, getting ready to eat with the pigs. Here I am down here using drugs. Here I am down here in the middle of this pit, this pit of poverty. But in my father's house, there is plenty. He said, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up from where I am. And I'm going to go down to my father's house. And look what he says. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm not even worthy anymore to be called your son. <laughs> Make me as one of your hired servants. Oh, I thank you for the grace of God. I thank you for your grace, Lord God. I thank you for your goodness that looked beyond my faults and sought my needs. In the midst of all of the sins that we did, God looked beyond our faults and sought our needs. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise because it was grace that bought my liberty. How precious is that grace that make my make no that I met at that first hour when I believed. And we find here he said, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. When he left home, he said, Give me. When he came back home, he said, Make me. Oh, look at it. Look at look at the difference. He was saying, Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. When he left home, he was just give me, give me, give me. But when he came back home, he was on his way home, he said, make me. Oh God, Lord Jesus, make me. They had a song that said, Lord, I'm available to you. Use me, Lord God, to your will. Use me to your glory. Whatever you want to do in my life, Lord God, use me to your purpose. And so as he's on his way, verse 20, he arose and came to his father. His father had been waiting for him. His father had been looking for him. My brother, my sister right out there right now in, in, in the world, your father's looking for you. It may not be this earthly dad, but your heavenly father, he's looking for you. He's, he's standing at that wonder looking. He's saying, my child's coming home today. I know they're out there right now, but I believe they're coming home today. I believe somebody's coming home today. God is going to bring them home. And the word says he was on his way and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great ways off, the Bible said he wasn't even close. Daddy ran to him and grabbed him up in his arms and hugged him. He said, thank God. He said, my baby's home. He said, uh, he said, he started talking. He said, he said, he said I'm not worthy. I've sinned against heaven. Look at him. Look, look at him, y'all. The son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven. And look, look, but now look at what the father's doing. He's, he's telling him, he's repenting. But look at verse 20. He arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of all that we've done, God has sent his son. He has compassion on us. 
He is not judging us according to our sins, but he is judging us according to our faith. Accepting him as Lord and Savior, he has compassion and mercy. He had compassion on him. And not only that, he ran and he fell on his neck and kissed his son. And the son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servant, he ignored the boy. <laughs> look, 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 look at verse 22. He ignored him. He said to the father, said to the servant, bring forth the best robe. Robe is for kings. A robe is for kings. You're a king's kid. You're out there doing all that foolishness, but you're a king's child. God has told me to tell you, get out from under that thing that you have got. God, he can take, he can take you out from under. He can take the taste of that thing out of your mouth. He said, put it on him. Put that robe on him. Not only that, go, go get the ring. Go get a ring and put on his hand. A ring means a king. Rings are for kings to wear. This wasn't just any kind of ring. This was a diamond ring with, uh, with studs in it. This was a fine ring that, that the father brought to him. But not only that, he said, put shoes on his feet. See, slaves, they didn't wear shoes. <laughs> See, he didn't call you a slave. You are a son and a daughter of God. God has so much more for you. He has so much more for you, my brother, my sister. He has so much more for you, my friend. He has so much more for you than racism. He has so much more for you than cursing and fussing, laying and playing, huffing and puffing. He's got so much more for you than smoking weed and sniffing cocaine. He's got so much more. And then not only that, he said, now let's feed him. Let's have a dinner. He said, bring forth the fattest calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. Again, he was lost and he's found. And they began to make merry. So they had a party. Oh God, no, 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 no. you think I forgot my text, but I didn't forget my text. I said a good daddy with two bad boys. One bad boy done got together, but one boy who was home was jealous. The worst thing you can be is jealous. When somebody has a gift, you ought to celebrate their gift. You ought to be excited because whatever God does for one, he's able to do for another. Celebrate and enjoy when others go up and others are blessed because your time is coming up. If you can celebrate with someone else, then God will elevate you also. The word says, for this my son was dead, he's alive. And they began to make merry, verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh unto the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things mean. They said to him, your brother, your brother is come. And your father has killed the fattest calf because he has received him safe and sound. All that man cared about was that his baby was home. He didn't care if he had spent all his money on prostitutes. He didn't care if he was diseased. He didn't care if he was sick. He didn't care if he was broke, busted, disgusted. He was on his side because he had compassion on the child because the child came back humbly before God. I'm here to let you know if you come humbly before God, God hears your prayer. He hears your prayer, but this man was angry. Look at, look at this other son, a bad boy, two bad boys. One got it together. Look at this one. He answered and said to his father, he was angry. Look, look, verse 28, he was angry, huh? And, and would not go in. He wouldn't go in. He was not going to go. He said, I ain't going in there. Hey, haven't you been around folk like that? They, 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 they see you going up, and when they see you going up and you're doing a little bit better, they don't seem like they are happy for you. Oh, but I'm here to let you know that's all right. Everybody that looks at you when you're going up, always going down, and they look down on you. Always remember that when you get all the way down, there ain't nowhere to go but up. I'm here to let you know this son who had been lost, he was found. The son who was in the house was in the house, in the church house, but he was lost. Some folk 
in church are lost. And some folk in the world will come to the church and they will exceed folk that have been in the church for years. And these folk that are in the church, they'll get mad and get indignant because someone comes along and hadn't been in the church all those years. But they had faith and they turned it over because faith the size of a mustard seed, it will move mountains. So we find that this son said, I ain't going in, daddy. He was angry and he would not come in. So his father came out and entreated him and begged him and pleaded with him. Verse 29, he answered, Father, lo, these many years, don't it sound like us? These many years I served you. Yes, neither did I transgress against you and I kept your commandments. And yet here you're giving my brother a kid and that he you may be merry with his friends. But as soon as this son came, you didn't give me one, but you're giving him a party. But as soon as this one comes back, who has devoured all of your goods, he's devoured his income and he spent it on harlots and on riotous living. And here you're killing the fattest calf and having a party. Well, I'm glad that the father answered him. And he says, son, you've been with me the whole time. But this boy has been out and about. I didn't know where he was. Many nights I was crying and wondering, where is my child? Now, you don't know how that feels unless you're a father or a mother that cares about their child. They go from your lap to your heart. I can imagine this was a good daddy. Every day he would say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou wilt draw thyself from me, whether shall I go? Lord, bless my child. Keep my child in your care. And when it's time, wind it up. Get them back to themselves and let them come back home. He said, my child, he was lost. He said in verse 32, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother, he was dead, but he is alive. Again, he was lost and he's found. You might be lost today, but I'm here to let you know Jesus saves. Jesus saves to the utmost. Jesus saves to the guttermost. Jesus saves. You might be down. Jesus saves. You might be broke. Jesus saves to the utmost, to the guttermost. Jesus saves. I'm glad Jesus saved. One day I was lost on my way to a devil's hell. I came to the church house. I was too scared to go down the aisle, but God arrested my soul and I could not be contented. I had to give my life to the Lord. I'm so glad. I say I'm glad he died on the cross. Yes, he did. And he got up with all power. I said all power in his hand. I'm glad. I said, I'm glad, glad, glad that trouble don't last always. One of these days, gonna wind my shield, wind my winding shield. He's my wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's the rose of Sharon, heavy low Sharon, bright and morning star. He's wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. He is the mighty counselor, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah.
Lord. My, 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 my 
My story is empty and I am available to you. Bless you, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah.